So this is Dog Story Theater. This is Grand Rapids' most affordable and unique black box theater space. So here we are in Dog Story's bathroom, and I have left my mark here on Dog Story because my picture is up in the bathroom for everyone to stare at. One of the coolest things about Dog Story is the variety of different shows that you can use this space for. That's what makes a black box so great in the first place. So it is actually a 501c3 uh, not-for-profit organization. So everyone who comes in and cleans this place, who runs box office, who does any work on it, is here because they want to be and because they love this theater. There was another space that opened up downtown called the Fuse Box. And the Fuse Box came in and was, again, amazing for the artistic community there, but did not get the financial support it needed, and the Fuse Box closed down. And it was devastating for a lot of us. Um, and it was about that time that we kind of learned that Dog Story was also in trouble. Dog Story really does need help. We need to pay attention to that fact. And if we're not doing anything and not giving back, we are going to lose this space. I thought you said, oh, oh, gosh. <laughs> no, I put a level five skill. Huh? No, I you thought you another four tower. Right. No, no, no. Your speed is not. I feel like reading is hard. I got this idea to do this fundraiser. So I, I hit up uh, Brooke Heinz because I knew she was a game master and I was like, what if we did a live D&D show? And she messaged me back and was just like, uh, that's kind of like my dream. So, yes. Hello and welcome to Dice Tales. We're here to bring you a live Dungeons and Dragons experience unlike anything you have seen before. Dice Tales is performed by local actors in the Grand Rapids community as a fundraiser for Dog Story. Break legs, break a leg, break a leg, break somebody else's leg. <laughs> so when Dice Tales started, we thought we were doing a one, one night, kind of a one shot adventure we call it. Um, and at the end of that night, we were just like, this was a lot of fun and we need to do this again. We realized that we really liked doing it and people kept coming to see us, so we Decided, why not? Let's keep it going. Um, I'm gonna cast Elemental Touch. All right. Uh, so rub my hands together, snap my fingers, light them on fire, and I'm just gonna reach out and try and touch it. D&D at its heart is like interactive storytelling. So the idea is that you're with a group of your friends and there's one person, the game master, who's running the game and everyone else has a single character that they play. So they get to create their character and then the game master will set a scenario and say, here's where you are, here's what's happening, and you have to react as your character. Uh, so I'm gonna jump up in the trees and just, I want to like do like the Tarzan thing, you know, where I'm just kind of like... <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons was always like this like lower level of nerdness that is like, you just, you didn't want to go there. I think there's a stereotype that it's an antisocial kind of hobby when it's actually the opposite of that. Oh, side note, I may or may not have bought a prop. I have a fake ax now. What a nerd is and what it's becoming in the past decade, I think is changing. Nerd culture is really, really taking off. And I think we owe that kind of to like shows like Stranger Things. The Demogorgons. And, like Critical Role, for example. You've never played Boulder Paper Shears? <laughs> <laughs> Lately, there's sort of a D and D renaissance happening culturally, and watching people who are skilled at improv or skilled at acting do that um, really kind of sells the fun part of playing a role. You should have accepted my worthers. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I've been watching him since the first session. This is my first time coming out here. Uh... I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm a, I'm a D&D player from way back. Instead of like a TV show where things are like pre-planned before you watch it, you're watching something that's changing live, almost like sports. I thought that if we could get people to come, that we could play it in a way that people would realize how much fun it was and want to watch it. But I did not expect that it would be something we would be doing all the time or that we'd eventually get sponsors or expand and do it at conventions. There's always a, a hope that we can expand um, and that we can draw a bigger crowd size. I mean, the bigger the better, the more money comes to Dog Story, it's all good things. 
So Grand Rapids Comic Con is coming up in November, so it's that second weekend of November. So with Comic Con, our main goal is to grow our fan base and, and get the word out about what we're doing. We're hoping that our crowds here at Dog Story will, will grow in the aftermath of our Comic Con show. I mean, I think that there are some people who will really gravitate to our mission, which is to support this theater, and there are other people who are just like, oh my god, these guys are playing D&D. Uh, yes, yes please, I want to go see that. Hey, it's California, it's cold and it's damp. We are at Fulton Street Pub and Grill, That's where a lot of us lady. always come on Thursday nights for karaoke. Lady. So tomorrow is the big day. That's we are less than 24 hours at this point from the Comic-Con show. So we are going to get together and celebrate tonight. The Comic-Con. I have all my things. Everything else is in the car. It's going to be good. I know that it's just the same thing we always do, like Chuck says, which does make me feel better. It's just the, it feels like bigger stakes. And I know that we will potentially have a much bigger audience than I'm used to. here at Grand Rapids Comic Con. So basically this convention is a nerd haven. It's where we can all gather together and completely let all of our geeky habits hang out and be appreciated for it. Tom, can you get the sound to come out of here? I don't even speak Windows. Yeah, sure. It needs to go out of the... Yeah. Um, what does it need to be attached to? Know time it we have 15 minutes. This is the one problem. Speaker yeah, out. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <Yay>! Woo! <laughs> go team! So the crowd that we've got here is probably over double what our normal size would be, which is really exciting to see. So I'm excited to share with a lot of new faces out here. Sinks its fangs right into his neck. Oh. I'm going to turn to my friends and I'm going to say, Everybody run! And I go and play another note oh. on my flute. Make another perform check. Come on, baby. Tears, blessings. Natural 20. Oh. Oh. It's way more than I could have ever hoped for or expected to see what this has become now. I don't know how long this ride will last, but I'm really excited to be on it for as long as we can go. Theater in any form, whether it's improv comedy or Shakespeare or a performative D&D show, is about community. And it doesn't mean that there aren't bubbles out there where that community can be a negative thing, but I have never felt that way about the home that I have. It's something that feels almost magical about this space, and that is something that I never want to lose.